Australian alternative varieties. Yes. Mm. Uh, what do we think? Uh, I was at a loss because I couldn't get Chardonnay on any of these. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Wine from the people, welcome back. We have another episode of our blind wine tasting show. We have three wines here. We're trying to identify the variety. We're gonna tell you how much we should pay for them, how many we'd buy, just so you can understand how much we like them and we hope that you will like them too. Today, we have been kindly supplied three wines from our friends at Different Drop and they have supplied us with three Australian alternative varieties. Um, we're so something we love here. We're currently housed at Unico Zello. Uh, we love alternative varieties. We think they shouldn't be called alternative. They should just be called Australia's varieties. That's how much we love them. And you can try all these wines yourselves. If you go to the Different Drop website, head to the Wine for the People segment, uh, and you can get a nice discount code on that. And you can try all these wines. It helps the show, it helps the Different Drop guys, helps everybody. Everybody wins. Everyone gets wine, money, support the best. So regardless, let's try identify these three wines and what alternatives they are. Ready, steady, cook it is. It's alternative week here on Wine for the People. We're drinking alternative Australian styles, which is why I've worn my pretending to be an alternate music fan t-shirt today. It's a shirt, not a t-shirt. Let's find out what these wines are. Wine number one. Bit of badinage, very lean expression, but this is more about showcasing a little bit more of the barrel work and the winemaker aspect of this. It's a white variety that is alternative. It's probably Fiano. <laughs> that's, that's probably what it is. It's what we do in Australia. I think um, it's it's become one of our most championed white varieties. Definitely that batonage flowing all the way through the palate, but really giving a really uh, amazing upfront presence. As to sort of varietal expression, I'm not too sure. I think I would throw about 26 bucks at this and I'd want about three bottles. Bit of a fun, light, juice, juby expression, but um, yeah. Maybe not the most complex or varietal, varietally expressive. Got to be Fiano for my money. And a really good one too. Great acidity, great texture, love the saltiness, love the kind of mineral thing that runs there. Leasy um, texture, textural thing right through the middle is really fantastic. It's a really good example of Fiano. I mean, what's, an, what's another? One of the only alternative white varieties I know is Fiano, so I'm going to say Fiano. I don't think it's Fiano. I drink plenty of it. I would grab three bottles. Um, and I would be happy to pay 35 bucks for that. I think that is a really good wine, a really good example of the variety, and it's exactly why it's been so beloved in Australia for the last decade or so, and why it's so difficult to get your hands on. Um, really amazing wine. Um, next one. This looks like uh, prune juice. It's this nice, clear red thing. Instantly looking at it, I'm thinking Gamay, or Gamay as the kids call it these days. Fun wine, really, really fun wine. Appealing uh, sort of herbaceous strawberries on the palate, almost like you've kind of confused, uh, you know, it's like a caprese salad and uh, like straw, like littered with strawberries and raspberries. So you've kind of got this like basil, olive oil, tomato thing, but then you've got a lot of primary fruit. I love that. That's really fun. I'll grab six of that. That's really cool. Really bright, juicy, pretty. Variety's a challenge. That's really, really good. Oh man. So like, similar to the first one. Big fruit up front, juicy. You're drinking wine. You know you're drinking grape juice. And then it's got this like smooth vanilla-y sort of mid palate thing. A really interesting expression. Like I would, I would drink copious amounts of this. I'm into 12 bottles of that and I want 35 bucks a bottle. I reckon would be a pretty sharp thing. As to the variety again, I'm not sure. Like it's not jumping out of the glass of being varietally expressive apart from maybe Sangiovese. Because it's not really, it's got some spiciness. I'm not exactly sure what this could be. Doesn't really scream Sangiovese to me. Doesn't really scream uh, Nero Davila to me. And I would pay $45 a bottle for that. That is, we've gone from one of the worst ones that we've had on the show in a while to, yeah, I'm taking that home with me. We've got a fire performance thing to go to tonight. I'm gonna need to be a little bit drunk. And then the last wine, dense, deep, dark, rich. What are we gonna have? Really lovely and savory. Got some nice kind of like the baking spices there too. Oh, this is a lovely little wine. Wine number two is still my favorite. This is excellent. It's really good, but it, it does just have like a more savory tobacco-y finish to it. And that's fine. Like it's actually really nice to taste. 
dense, real, real good expression here. As to the variety, not too sure. I mean, my first thought goes straight to really great Sangio, really great Nebbiolo. Man, the cola thing is so, it's like a, it's like blueberry cola. If that was ever a thing, it would look like this. Oh, superb. Absolutely superb. Brilliant, brilliant wine. Yeah, I mean, all three of those wines were fantastic. All three of them were fantastic. That's a clear standout for me, but... But it doesn't match how it smells. So in terms of like a complete drinking experience, I don't know if I want to be like smelling this and going like, ah, oh, sweet, jelly, juicy fruit, and then switching gears into like, ah, oh, savory, serious wine. Insane tannin. Rich, dense, full on. Now I'm kind of thinking this is like a Saparavi, like a really well-made, really well-matured Saparavi. And if it is, I'm so stoked because I've not really found a lot of Australian Saparavi or of that ilk that I really enjoy, but this I really, really, really enjoy. 12 bottles and I would happily drop 45 bucks a bottle on it. Let's see what the other guys think. I mean, it's a great showcase of what we what we can do in Australia, in this country, that's not what every other New World country does, which is pick the best of France and plant to here. We can do something completely different to every other New World country, and this is a great showcase of what we can do. This is epic. Cool. Wow, you are rock solid. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, do this. I need the cuddles. Yeah. No cud. <laughs> Kid he Cuddy. looks very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, he's not stoked. All righty then. Australian alternative varieties. Yes. Mm. Uh, what did we take? Uh, I was at a loss because I couldn't get Chardonnay on any of these. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a yes. good challenge though, isn't it? I like it. I mean, yeah. it's, we it's, should be good at the old. Thing, though. I mean, yeah. But I found this the yeah. hardest I thing. I wonder yeah. why. I wonder yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, I liked one a lot. I disliked one quite a bit. Okay. Mm. That's interesting. I, I quite I liked all three of these um, in varying degrees, but I, um, there was one that I was just wrapped on. But let's get into it. Uh, wine number one. Mm -hmm. I did not like this wine did at not, all. No. I wasn't the biggest fan either. I just... There's a lot of batonage going on, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that stuck out about the wine. I couldn't, like, in terms of varietal specificity, I was like, I'm, I want to know what the variety is. Ah, it's not really giving me much. It's a very good Fiano. Um, I think it's great, great texture. Love the, the, the batonage. I quite liked that character. I think it was really cool. Uh, but that being said, um, I only wanted three, and I would pay 35. Three and 26. Yeah, I agreed with everything you said, except the positive parts. I wanted one for 28. But I thought it was Fiano. Yeah, sick. Well done. Mm. Seven yin. Seven yin. Wow. Stony Rise, um, and I, I love the fact that I'm pretty confident, I, 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 I mean, not confident, um, that that's the indigenous uh, nation that the land's on. I like the back though, I have to say. <laughs> Freight and Sauvignon, Skinzy, Cardamom, Nutty, Zesty, Structured, Cocker, Vin Blanc, Prawn Dumplings, Boomba, Friends. Joe Holliman, amazing cricketer as well, Joe Holliman. Um, but now that actually makes sense, the batonage, the saltiness, the freshness. Uh, well, let's move right along then. Number two. Return to form, this bopped. I loved yeah, this, this wine. This was so this was good. good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, just carbonic, yeah. good fun. In yeah. like, it was 12 juice. bottles from me, 35 bucks, and I was like, I don't really care what it's actually made from because I don't actually think it's about the variety, I think it's about the style. Yeah, I said 12 for 45. It's got this really nice mid-palate thing which is like sort of vanilla-y and like smooth. Mm -hmm. And it's got like fruit at the front and then it's got that really nice smooth mid-palate which I find sometimes wines, like I want them to taste like this. I want them to have <laughs> that smooth mid thing, but yeah, then they'll just be like, Alcohol, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah of course. Well, it is, it, that is a really fine balance to get, whereas you get that really smooth palate shape, and, but the, most of the time when you have that kind of Ooh. broadness, it is high alcohol. Uh, six for 40 for me. 12 and 35? Yeah, 12 for 45, gamay. Gamay for me as well. 38, I said magic Sanj. number. Sanj, okay. Okay. As a stab. It's coming a stab. up Just though. a random stab. Orbis. Orbis. Um, Oh. Trousseau. Fucking hell. Trousseau. All right, alternative just means Jura, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Trousseau, there you go. That's fantastic, man. That was really good. I re that's one of my favorite wines that we've had on in quite a while. You love this. I, I fucking love this too. Absolutely adored this. This yeah. is fucking brilliant. Mm -hmm. I think this is like, uh, I thought this was Sangiovese. I think this is ashamedly a champion for this variety to be more apparent in the more like cool to moderate regions across Australia. And this is that variety in this country at its absolute peak. So fucking good. I think this is fantastic. I just, I call it Saparavi. Again, total freaking stab. Yeah. I still just love the wine. I would like to drink this with food, 
Yeah, 100%. And I'm lazy, so quite often I'm more drawn to things that I don't have to have an accompanying meal with. So mm -hmm. for me, I uh, really enjoyed it. Six for 38. I also called Sanjia. It's very we funny. We called the exact same. It's very funny that we lined up. We came, It's like <laughs> the two kids that one knows maths, one doesn't, but we both get the same numbers at the end. Like, <laughs> how does this happen? And like, I feel great about myself, and you're like, fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but un unfortunately, we've both been wrong. Oh, entirely wrong, entirely wrong. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Whoa! That's remarkably good value. I wanted 45 bucks. I wanted 50. Oh, wow. Tints of Cow from the Riverlands. <laughs> Fuck me. Territorio. I haven't seen these wines uh, look so good. 14.5%, so it's sitting on the... Um, yeah, uh, sitting on the, the the weightier side of alcohol, you wouldn't guess it though. Like it's not. No, it doesn't taste boozy. And that is yeah, Tinta Cow, amazing Portuguese grape variety, classic Portuguese grape variety. That's got a good future here. Yeah, I agree. That's got a really solid. That's a future. really cool wine. That is tasty. It's got a really great bottle and a really good, like really good uh, aesthetic, and it's a really good price. Mm -hmm. I reckon that's going to fly off the shelves. Uh, are, we, are we calling that wine of the week? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Uh, I'm this was excellent. Like, this the Trousseau is also delicious too. But like that price, and uh, honestly, I'm a sucker for a cool label, and I really like that label. Yeah, the kind of like yeah, textile thing. It's pretty mm. sick. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. Tinta Cow, variety that you wouldn't buy because it sounds weird, but you should buy it because it's freaking <laughs> delicious. <laughs> yeah, big time. <laughs> See you next week. Ciao.